So we're going to do uh, Equilibria Energetics and Elements from June 2017. So the first question wants for a definition, which is always rather nice, um, if you know these. So for lattice enthalpy, it's formation of one mole of an ionic compound from its gaseous ions. Um, and that's not bad for two marks to start off. Okay, so it now wants me to explain why it's difficult to predict whether the lattice enthalpy of magnesium bromide would be more or less exothermic than sodium chloride. So let's have a look at this. So the first thing we'll do is we will compare magnesium and sodium. So the magnesium ion is Mg2+, and the sodium ion is just Na+. So Mg is smaller, Mg2+, is a smaller ion um, than Na+, and will have a greater charge density. However, when we compare chloride and bromide, we will see now that chloride is the smaller iron and has a larger charge density. So we have sodium, which has the smallest charge density combined with chloride, which has a larger charge density, and magnesium, which has a larger charge density uh, bonded with bromide, which has a smaller charge density. So um, it's very difficult to know which one is going to have the greatest influence. So for part C, they want us to complete this born harbour cycle. Now I've done this um, because it's difficult to keep flipping back and forth between the two pages. Um, so for A, A they tell me is the atomization of magnesium. So hopefully you can see that going from there to there, I've turned one mole of magnesium solid into one mole of magnesium gaseous atoms. For D, they've told me that is the atomization of bromine. So remember, bromine is a diatomic molecule, so you start off with it being Br2, and you will end up with two Br gaseous atoms, so two moles of bromine gaseous atoms. Now they want me to do uh, predict what these two are going to be. Well, you've got to get to Mg2 plus up there, so it's got to be the first ionisation of magnesium, which is B, followed by the second ionization as your magnesium, which goes, which is C, up here. Um, and you can see that you are uh, forming Mg plus here with an electron here, and Mg2 plus here with now two electrons there. And that leaves me with E. E um, is going to be taking these two electrons and putting them on to the bromine atoms uh, to give me two Br minus. Now, when you come to do part two down here, uh, the key thing to remember is when you do this, um, the atomization of bromine, you're going to have to times that by two because you're forming two moles of bromine atoms. And for E, you're also going to times that by two because you're forming two moles of bromide ions. Um, and of course, F is going to be the... Um, formation of magnesium bromide down here. Okay, so when you come to put all of these in to find the lattice enthalpy of magnesium bromide, if you imagine you've got a circle like so, this is like doing a head cycle, hopefully you can see the A, D, B, C, and if you think about the circle being in the middle, like so, and E and G are all going uh, clockwise, whereas F is going anti-clockwise. So that means that F is equal to all of the others added up here. So then you pop your numbers in and you don't know G and then you rearrange this to find G is equal to minus 2433 kilojoules per mole. All right, so a nice question about entropy now. Um, so what's pr predict and explain whether the entropy change delta is positive or negative for the following. So we need to think about whether the disorder will be increasing or decreasing. If it increases, delta S is positive. If it decreases, delta S is negative. So let's have a look. Melting of iron, well, that is going to be positive because um, iron in a solid, a solid is going to a liquid. In a solid, all the ions um, are in fixed positions, whereas as a liquid, they can move um, freely within the liquid. So a liquid has more disorder. 
The reaction of magnesium with dilute sulfuric acid. Well, this is also going to be positive. Um, and the main reason is, is because, um, well, first of all, you've got magnesium solid uh, becoming magnesium 2 plus ions. Um, so it's dissolving and obviously uh, a solid is going to be much more ordered than a solution. Uh, but the main thing is that you are forming H2 gas. And whenever you form a gas, you have um, far more disorder in the system. And how about this one here, combustion of ethane? Well, for this side, you've got 9 moles of gas. And on this side, you've got 4 moles of gas here, but 6 moles of liquid. Now, the main thing is when you're looking at the changes is how many moles of gas do you form? So you've got 9 going to 4. So you've got five fewer moles of gas being produced and therefore delta S will be negative. Right, so now let's put some numbers into entropy. Um, and they want me to calculate the standard enthalpy change delta S in joules per mole for this reaction here. Um, so we're going to use delta G for this. They've told me delta G and they've also told me delta H and they've told me the temperature that it's done. Obviously, you need to convert that temperature into Kelvin by adding 293. Okay, so let's put some numbers in. So delta G is minus 1041. Um, that is going to equal minus 907 minus T, which is 723, times delta S. Okay, so let's rearrange that. That comes to minus 134 is equal to minus 723 delta S. So delta S is going to equal 134 divided by 723, which is equal to 0 0.185. Now remember that is in kilojoules per Kelvin per mole. So we're going to convert that to 185 joules per Kelvin per mole. Okay, so a reaction is not feasible at low temperatures, but is feasible at high temperatures to reduce the sign of delta H and delta S. Okay, so for it to be not feasible, um, delta G must be positive, but it changes with respect to temperature. So this expression here must be getting more negative as temperature increases and therefore delta S must be positive because otherwise this whole expression minus T delta S would become positive if delta S is negative as well. And also delta H must also be positive. Um, because if this is small and positive, um, then, sorry, if this one here is small and positive, then we also want this one to be positive for delta G to be positive. But as this becomes bigger, um, minus T delta S will become more negative and therefore delta G will become negative at high temperature. Okay, so question three. Uh, this is quite straightforward. So what's the order of reactions? So order respect to NO. So NO is 2 because it's got a power of 2 above it. H is going, H2 is going to be 1. Um, and the overall reaction of the two, 2 plus 1 added together gives you 3. So the concentration of NO and H2 are both increased by 5 times. So if they're both increased by 5 times, that's going to be 5 squared times 5 which is 5 cubed, which is 125. So the rate of reaction would change, um, would increase by 125. Okay, nitrogen monoxide and hydrogen reacted together, and they've given us the information here. Calculate the rate constant. So we've basically got to rearrange this expression here to give us this here. We then input the numbers. I would always recommend that you actually work out this expression um, rather than try and do it all as one um, to give you this, just in case you make a calculator error, you'll at least get some marks there. 
and you'll end up with it being 7.59 times 10 to the 4. For units, let's have a look at that. It's going to become moles per decimeter cubed per second divided by moles per decimeter cubed cubed. That's supposed to be a cube there. So that's going to cancel that. That will then become squared. So um, the units will become moles to the minus 2, decimeters to the power 6, seconds to the minus 1. Okay, so complete the table below to show the effect of rate, of rate, reaction rate and rate constant of the following changes. So if I increase the pressure, we know from AS chemistry that the reaction rate will increase. But there won't be any effect on the rate constant. The rate constant only changes with temperature. Talking of which, what will happen with temperature? Well, the, again, the rate, the, as we increase the temperature, the rate of reaction will increase. And also, the rate constant increases as well. Right, okay. So, um, they've given me, the again, the rate equation here. And step two, it's um, a two-step mechanism. And they want me to write the equation for step one. Well, step one is going to be the rate determinant step. And I know that in there, I have NO and H2 and two molecules of NO because it's squared there. Um, okay, so what could that give me? Well, one of them has got to be N2O, and therefore if I rearrange that, the other one, what I'm left over with is H2O. Why does it have to be N2O? Well, because I've got N2O here, and that has to cancel when I add those two equations together. Okay, so what will be the overall equation? Well, if I add step one and step two together, um, you will see I have two NO. The N2Os will cancel. Um, I'm going to end up with two H2Os because those two get added together. Um, I'm also going to end up with N2 uh, from this guy here. And what am I left over with to add that together is going to be 2H2 because I'm going to add that H2 and that H2 like so.